Hello everyone, welcome to this video. My name is Amir Sinahari, I'm a Google Earth Engine expert. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do dust mapping in the Earth Engine platform and remote sensing data. Let's go to the code editor environment. Unlike the previous studies, now we don't like to set the region of the interest because uh, we want to do the time series analysis and uh, clustering mapping in this tutorial only in the global scale and no need to select a specific region as a study area. So, in the first step, you need to find your desired data or target data through the search places and data set. If you search through Mera 2, you will see that all Mera 2 products available here. As you can see, one of the Mera 2 products is RSL Diagnostic helping us to identify our result characteristic in global scale with 50,000 meter spatial resolution. Go to the data description here and then you can check all the information related to this product. This product is available since 1980 to 2024 with 50 meter roughly 50 kilometer spatial resolution and hourly temporal resolution. The hourly time average or temporal resolution helping us to monitor the dust variations accurately. So, and uh, 50 kilometer spatial resolution is too coarse, I know, but this product is specifically used for the global scale. Most of the time, our studies uh, covers a large area and not uh, and also we don't have focus on a local study area uh, specifically for the dust studies because dust is a kind of catastrophe that happening in the larger scale and uh, varies spatially and temporally from one hour to another hour as you can see various bands available here and all of them covering different characteristics for the dust for example one of the most famous data is our optical thickness or our optical depths in 500, uh, 500 nanometer wavelengths. That's highly useful for the dust monitoring and global studies. So with the spatial resolution it has. So now in order to use this product into the code editor, just copy the name of the product and paste it into the search places and data set here. In search places and data set, paste the data information as you can see and here you will see that the Mero 2 product aerosol diagnostic is available. Import it into the code as an image collection and then make a variable for a new variable as AOT aerosol optical thickness equals to the image collection imported. And now, as this data is hourly, meaning that for each day, we will have 24 AOT image. So, for example, through the filter date, you can check it. The time start, for example, since 2010, the 1st January of 2010 to the 2nd January of, to the 2nd of January like this and then print the AOT in the right panel you will see that only for one day uh, we have 24 elements 24 elements starting from 0 a.m. to 23 p.m. as you can see this data available and also in the properties the hour the amount and the day also separated now I'm going to show you a technique that helping you to select the data according to a specific hour or according to a specific month or a specific day using calendar range. For example, let me set a new temporal range from 2010 to 2011. So here, for example, we want to do the dust monitoring just uh, only based on the data collected around, for example, 12 p.m. So, and then make a new filter to do this, make a new filter and using calendar range, 
earth engine that filter that calendar range we will be able to filter our data based on different temporal filters so in the left panel go to the dock to understand which kind of filters available through the calendar range just copy and paste the calendar range inside and as you can see here we have the calendar range with different field of uh, with different fields from uh, you can filter your data according to a specific year or month or hour or minutes or day of year or day of month or day of week it's very very helpful for the high temporal resolution data you are working now i have a uh, hourly data and also using this filter i can only select a specific or a single hour to for the analysis in the next step so imagine that now through the calendar range i want to select all data from each day i want to keep the data for uh, 12 p.m. so earth engine dot calendar range here and some arguments available the start end and field as I'm gonna filter the data based on hour the field should be hour and I want to get the data for 12 like this run the code and finally we will have a third 365 elements available here as you can see and all of them are for our 12 as you can see randomly when you check them you will see all of them uh, available for our 12 so and the calendar range helping us to filter our data based on different characteristics or based on different temporal characteristics uh, regarding to the temporal resolution we have so in the next step I'm gonna show you how to visualize the global AOT map but before that you can see for each date uh, 50 bands available if you go to the bands you can see 50 parameters or factors available regarding to the dust condition through the band information and description here you can uh, find your desired or target band as i as i am gonna working on dust scattering or aot my target band will be this copy the name of target band and throw the dot select will be able to select the only dust scattering or aot according to the 500 nanometer wavelengths run the code again in the right panel you will see a new collection 365 elements under each with one single band that referring to the aot for our 12 so in the next step we need to do visualization process to visualize 365 image we need to stack all the images all the elements into a single file make a new variable aot stack equals to get all images under aot variable and throw dot to bands stack them all into a single file into a single got files with a 365 bands in which each band showing the RSL condition for each date so now if i print aot stack you will see a new image is created with 365 band 365 bands available one file with 365 bands and each of uh, and also each band showing the dust condition for a for a single date so then through the map.add layer you will be able to visualize aot stack no need to clip it based on the region because we want to see the result for the global scale we can do it for the coarse spatial resolution data 
because they have no framing structure and low spatial resolution helping us to do such kind of visualization process in the Earth Engine platform easily. So leave the visualization parameters empty because we don't have only one band into a stack ball, multiple bands available and as multiple bands available we can set a, a specific visualization palette or something like that. So then the layer name is AOT stack and then use the false false helping us to avoid automatic visualization that highly reduces the speed of processing in the Earth engine. Run the code and change your view using uh, tools available here or using a mouse cursor or buttons to have a word view to have a word uh, to have a good view to all run the word or most of the places at least and then you can see AOT stack is available here AOT stack before load it go to the uh, before loading process, go to the layer setting and choose the one band gray scale. You can see that all 365 bands available here. Select one of them and then through the stretching technique, increase the contrast. And once the contrast increased, you can uh, tap on apply and then check it on. For the visualization. I'm waiting to see the uh, final map. So as you can see there is a gray scale image here that in which the lower values and darker region shows the lower hour soul or lower uh, dust uh, lower dust and hazy condition and higher values and brighter region showing the higher dust condition and higher dust storm or aerosol in the air. So as you can see, this region that, uh, that uh, in this region with the brighter color and higher values definitely have higher dust or aerosol in this state. And the rest of the world compared to this region are darker and they have a lower dust condition. So through the inspector, if you click on the bright region, you can see that it has a, it has a single value in each date that its value plotted through the AOT stack. If you want to see the variations of AOT over the one year, it's very easy to select a point through a marker here. For example, through a marker, I'm gonna select a, re a region in a Libya. For example, I'm selecting a region here and then I want to monitor the dust condition or aerosol in the air in the 2010 using a plot function. Just use the user interface chart image.series helping you using image.series helping you to see the variation of the AOT for the selected point. Instead of image collection, you need to import an image collection, not a stack. So we have AOT here and instead of the region, the point or marker is geometry already named here and reducer as we are working on a point, we need to plot the first value detected for the point. Earth engine dot reducer dot first. So, and then the scale should be 50,000 because the spatial resolution is 50 kilometer. And instead of X properties, we need system time start. A main properties, a main property explaining the time information or date acquisition for the selected point. So again, after code runs, a new chart is generating. And as you can see, the AOT ranges from the zero 
between 0 and 2 and also when the AOT increases from 0 to a larger or bigger number meaning that the, uh, the, the larger amount of the aerosol or dust available uh, exists, uh, exists in the atmosphere for example when AOT increases or goes beyond the 0.5 or 0.6 meaning that this is not a simple aerosol in the atmosphere in such kind of condition in higher in higher values meaning that we have a dust storm or very dusty situation in that region so you easily you can monitor the dust condition for a larger time scale or for a longer time scale in the Google Earth engine platform here for a tutorial I have selected only one year to show the results quickly but you can extend the temporal uh, uh, temporal filter from one year to 10 years or even 20 years to see the variations easily and uh, accurately in the next step I need to compare the dust condition or AOT values between two points let me to do the visualization again again randomly select a date and or your target date and increase the contrast and use the apply to apply the enhancement process on existing band click on AOT stack to see the result after a few moments a new AOT map is plotted based on the date I have selected here so in this time I want to select another region for example I want to make a new geometry here throw a new layer and here you can see the distribution of dust condition for this uh, for this date in all around the world for example this region in Iran is covered by the dust or uh, or, or dense uh, aerosol condition so I want to select this point with a point in Algeria uh, to compare Algeria to compare their uh, AOT values in 2010 the first point in the desert in the central Iran and the second point located in the north of uh, Africa in Algeria so here before doing further processing we need to convert the geometry to a feature collection because when you want to compare two points uh, in the time series you need to have a feature collection instead of a simple geometry to compare between two or multiple points there is a simple function in the Google Earth engine platform again user interface chart image but this time series by region is going to help us to visualize the changes or plot the changes in each point separately and compare them into a single plot the input collection will be AOT again and the region this time instead of geometry we will have geometry number two that it is not geometry anymore it is a feature collection and for each point we want to see the reducer dot first the first value that's touched by point so the band name as we mentioned earlier is this and copy and paste of date name and instead of escape you need to import the spatial resolution value that is 50,000 and instead of X properties system time starts like this and instead of series properties the series properties referring to that column that's separating the point 1 and point 2 if you go to the geometry structure you will see there is system index for all shape files imported into the Earth engine 
or all the uh, feature collections you make here, you will have a system index that helping you uh, separating all features by a single number. So now here import the system index. The index number zero is the first place and the index number one is the second place. So and then run the code and after a few moments in the new chart you will see the variation of the AOT between the first and second place. The first point located in Iran, central desert, and the second point located in the north of Africa, Algeria. So if you go to the more details, you will see that obviously the red region, the north of Africa, experiencing higher dust condition uh, compared to the central Iran. And also, if you see the pattern of dust changes or AOT changes, you will see that there is an increasing trend from the starting year, from the start of year to the summer, and then there is a decreasing trend toward the end of a year. Meaning that in the summer time or drier time during a year, because of low precipitation, and low moisture content in the region of interest, we will have more AOT or aerosol or dust storms in that region. That makes sense. So back to the programming step. In the next part, I'm gonna show you how to do the time series clustering, how to do, how to make a clustering map for a, a dust condition to separate the regions according to the AOT condition. Now, in this step, we want to cluster all, uh, all the regions based on the characteristic, uh, based on the characteristic distribution and the values of AOT. So here, just I'm making a new session about the clustering. This is the first time in this tutorial in my YouTube channel I'm talking about the clustering technique or unsupervised classification. Clustering or unsupervised classification is a kind of uh, learning method in the machine learnings that available in the remote sensing that helping us to categorize our data without uh, auto or categorize our data automatically and also without doing sampling by the user. So for example here, I have 365 AOT values and I want to classify all the region of the world or all the regions are under a study uh, according to the cha uh, value changing in this product. So first, we need to collect some samples automatically. In the clustering uh, method, you don't need to do a uh, sampling process uh, by the user that uh, all the process is automatically and also even sampling part. Make a new variable, uh, for example, this is samples equals to from AOT bands or AOT stack layer, I want to collect the samples. There are some arguments that should be considered in the sampling process. The first is the region of interest. The region in which stamp we want to do the sampling. So for example, I can select a region through a geometry import in global scale. For example, I'm selecting whole of the world like this. And as you can see, whole the world selected in this study because I want to do the clustering. I want to collect the samples according to this region specifically and also it's very important that your geometry covers the dry regions in their uh in their for example dust condition mostly occur during the year or during uh days so as you can see the region now is equals to the geometry number three and another important argument is a scale equals to 50,000 meter. 
and the number of pixels that we need to collect as sample equals to for example 5000 or even 10,000 as we are working on global scale you can select a large number of pixels for the clustering so after samples collected using this method in the next part I'm going to I'm going to define a clusterer here using a built-in function in the Google Earth Engine platform. One benefit and advantage of Google Earth Engine for users is that the various, uh, the various functions for the machine learning analysis available there and for the users using the built-in uh, structure and you don't need to write very complicated or tricky code to do a time series or to do a mapping process using machine learning algorithm and also this is the simplest way for the automatic clustering method that I'm showing you in this process in this tutorial so in the next part now I'm making a clusterer for example there are various uh, clustering techniques in Earth Engine but one of the most famous ones in machine learning is k-means and here through the earth engine dot clustering or clusterer you will see that how many uh, clusters available here for example I'm going to use Veka k-means here in the Veka k-means multiple arguments available but most of them are optional except number of clusters it's very important to set the, uh, it's very important to set the number of clusters before further steps for example, I want to classify the, the AOT in all around the world into five or four classes because I want to uh, cluster different regions or see the, the different clusters according to the density, uh, according to the density and also the stability of the uh, dust or AOT uh, using clustering technique. So. For example, I'm setting number 5 as the number of clusters and then I want to train this model according to the samples collected. So uh, K means helping us to make 5 clusters according to the samples collected from the AOT stack. So in the next step, the K means model helping us to cluster all uh, AOT stack file. Here we have an AOT map equals to AOT stack imported into the model using clustering function dot cluster based on k means. I'm going to cluster AOT stack according to the k means that is already trained based on the number of pixels collected from AOT stack in our region of interest and according to the scale or spatial resolution. So finally, I'm gonna print AOT map to see if there is any syntax error or not. In the right panel, one image is under computing because we will have one clustered map. It is under computing and once the process of computing is over, we can show the result and visualize it in the Earth engine. So image with one band makes sense and also uh, meaning that there is no syntax error in the clustering techniques because we are not faced with any uh, type of errors in this regard. Then through the map.add layer, you will be able to see the AOT map or clustered map and no need to clip it based on the region because I want to see the clustered map in the global scale and leave the visualization empty for now and then the layer name is AOT map and use the faults to avoid automatic visualization process. Check out the geometry imports and here uh, through a layer you can uh, click on AOT map to show the result to to have a better visualization as we have five classes it is anticipated 
we have a uh, five number of classes from zero to four so here to better visualization set the mean equals to uh, means as equal equals mean to zero and then for the max set it number four to avoid any enhancement process so run the code again and click on aot map now i'm waiting to see the final result that is clustered map a clustered map according to the AOT characteristic in 2010. This is a clustering map only for one year. As we use the large number of images for the clustering technique, maybe it's a little time consuming process to see the final results, but be patient and also wait to see the results. If there if any problem happens in the processing and also it will be showed in the console part. So still we are waiting to see the final results. As you can see, the final map is created. The final map is created for all around the world. And you can see that the different regions classified based on the uh, based on the condition, based on the dust condition. For example, uh, here we have a four class, we have a five class map, for example, that uh, with only with variations only in the mid latitude regions or in the places that mostly covered by the uh, by the actually deserts or uh, these are mostly covered by the Dry, dry, dry regions actually so and then you will see that this is a very very clear map that's showing the variations of the dust in this region so in order to have a better visualization through a palette you can increase the contrast you can increase the quality of map by setting a palette or color through an inspector if I click on this region, for example, this region's value, I need to know that which value showing this region. Cluster number four. So the last cluster is number four and the next one is, and the next class value, for example, is number three. Yes, and now we can set a, a palette to visualize better for example here go to the palette go to a palette and define the colors so uh, the first uh, the first class value uh, I assume that the first class value uh, have the lowest uh, cloudy condition for example here I set the black color for this region or no for example uh, blue yes and also I'm setting colors manually without any standard, but you can uh, set a standard color for the final map. Just I want to show how to set the color and how to visualize it. And I'm not following any specific, any, any single standard for the uh, coloring the dust, uh, for the coloring or to set a palette for this map here. For example, then I have green, then the yellow and then orange and finally for example i have red here so apply it and then you will have a multicolor map with different classes available here the map is creating the map is creating and also you can uh, change the Color, uh, you can change the transparency to see that which countries are which uh, which countries included in which classes for example north of africa that is one of the main centers for the dust events or something like that north africa and a part of middle east covered by uh, red color and this region meaning that this region have the same characteristic regarding to the AOT values and changes. 
and the next class that here and the next class with the uh, uh, for example uh, lighter red color you can see here the next class in Egypt Libya Algeria showing that uh, having uh, shows that they have the same AOT characteristic with Saudi Arabia or this region in the China so that's uh, these kind of maps helping us to compare different regions to understand the similarity or differences for example in a global scale there is no dust event in the for example european countries and also uh, eastern countries uh, Euro uh, eastern european countries and also western countries at least compared to the uh, main uh, compared to the uh, these uh, dry regions or uh, these uh, uh, Africa countries, the African countries, then uh, the number of events or the number of uh, dust situation is really really low and is uh, and also is ignorable in our map because the most of dust events happening in this region according to the classification we have done. So, or even if you go to the Aus, uh, Australia, you will have some anomalies in the center of Australia, meaning that sometimes some dust events happening here. Or, uh, or for example, regarding to the AOT, you will see that in Iran, uh, there is a, in the central part of Iran, there is a similar characteristic with, for example, the other countries in the uh, Africa, in the uh, in the Egypt, in the part of Egypt, in the part of Saudi Arabia, in the Yemen, they have same AOT characteristic or with Turkmenistan, and also yes, this kind of map helping you to understand the to understand the dust situation and AOT similarity and differences in all around the world. That is very very useful to understand and. To understand and interpret the dust situation in different countries, you can do this. Uh, you can do this uh, clustering method for a uh, larger time scale extent, or even you can use it for, for example, uh, the another year if you want. For example, I can apply this uh, classification instead of 2010 for 2023, for example. We will have a new map only for this year but in unsupervised classification or clustering technique you should know that the class values may be changes from one day to, from one date to another date for example if uh, north of for example in the previous map the north of uh, Africa uh, had the number four and identified through the class number four but this time uh, maybe we will have another value for the North Africa. So, check it on AOT map. Again, you will have a new map and a new map with a new pattern. It's very important because the world is dynamic and also from one year to another year the dust pattern may be changed and also it's very very anticipable and makes sense uh, when you see the changes in the dust patterns from one year to another year again throw a pallet uh, in the code you can add visualization parameters or color, or color palette to see the outputs more realistic for example and starting from white you can set any color you want but I highly suggest you to use a standardized a standard visualization uh, for the visual uh, standard colors for the visualization to improve the inter uh, the power of interpretation in your results white yellow and orange red and brown for example ok 
click on IoT map again. After a few moments, you will see the new map that is created. If you had any problem regarding to the programming technique, the code, uh, the, code, uh, the code I'm using is available in the description part uh, in my YouTube channel below this video and you can use it uh, to compare it with your own code and if a problem still exists you can reach me out through my email address and I will try to help you to solve the result. As you can see uh, in the regions, uh, in the hottest uh, hot spot regions, colored by uh, brown color, in the north of Africa, in the Saudi Arabia and Iraq, and also in the part of China. And then you can see the other regions with different colors that helping you to understand more and, uh, about the dust situation and similarity and differences of different places. Hope you like this tutorial as much as I did and also uh, if you had any problem you can reach me out through my YouTube channel. Thank you for your attention.